हेलो एवरीवन आई एम सचिन राठौड़ वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन मेकैनिकल इंजीनियर डिपार्टमेंट फ्रॉम वॉलचिंग स्टॉप टेक्नोलॉजी सोलापुर सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी द पार्ट टू ऑफ द रोलिंग कॉन्टेक्ट बेरिंग सो ऑलरेडी वी आर सीन द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द बेरिंग एंड इन दैट बेरिंग यू शूड नो विच काइंड ऑफ द लोड इज गोइंग टू एक्ट ऑन द बेरिंग अकॉर्डिंग टू दैट वी हैव टू सिलेक्ट द सुटेबल टाइप ऑफ द बेरिंग दैट पार्ट वी आर सीन इन द प्रीवियस सेशन दैट इज अ रोलिंग कॉन्टेक्ट बेरिंग पार्ट वन द लर्निंग आउटकम ऑफ दिस सेशन इज द लर्नर विल एबल टू डिजाइन द इक्वेशन फॉर द स्टैटिक लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी ऑफ द बॉल बेरिंग so the introduction about the static load carrying capacity of the bearing so you can think about this if our shaft is stationary then how to find out the load acting on the bearing that we are knowing that uh, to support the shaft or to reduce the friction between the relative motion between the two rotating uh, rotating element at that times so we can use the bearing so how to find out the forces acting on the bearing because you should know uh, the how much amount of the forces is going to act on the bearing depending upon that we have to select the proper uh, we, we can give the proper designation to the bearing means we can choose the bearing that is depending upon the forces so which forces are acting on the bearing you can think about this and which direction it is going to act so we will see how to find out the forces acting on that bearing so to learn the forces acting on that bearing uh, for the static load so you should know what is in by static load the static load is defined as the load acting on the bearing when the shaft is as stationary means certain application in which the shaft is as stationary at that time also the load is going to act around the bearing so you should know how much amount of the load is going to act on the bearing so that we can identify which bearing is suitable for that shaft so uh, the force or the load produces the permanent deformations in the balls and the races which increases the increases in the load so as we are knowing that the certain amount of the load is going to act on the bearing so definitely the deformations of the balls and the races is going to occurs due to the load so as the load is increases the deformation is increases so if you observe that in this figure this is your the inner race this is the balls and here the outer race is going to place so as the load of this shaft this is a c not it is indicating the load is going to act in the downward position so that your the balls and the races will get deforms so as the load is going to increase the deformation will get increases so what is in by static load carrying capacity of the bearing it is defined as the static load which corresponds to the per total permanent deformations of the balls and the races at the most heavily stressed point of contact and it is equal to 0.0001 of the ball diameter right so this is called as a static load carrying capacity of the bearing load is going to act in the downward position so that your the balls and the races will get deforms so as the load is going to increase the deformation will get increases so what is in by static load carrying capacity of the bearing it is defined as the static load which corresponds to the per total permanent deformations of the balls and the races at the most heavily stressed point of contact and it is equal to 0.0001 of the ball diameter right so this is called as the static load carrying capacity of the bearing so for finding the static load carrying capacity of the bearing you should know the forces acting on that bearing so following are the assumptions they have made for finding the static load carrying capacity of the bearing and this for uh, the static load carrying capacity of the bearing has calculated by the stribach equations so certain assumptions they have made for calculating the static load carrying capacity so the following are the assumptions first assumption is that the races are rigid and retain their circular shape under the applied load so we are knowing that these are the inner race and the outer race 
it will retain their circular shape under the applied load the balls are equally spaced so if you are observing these balls which is in the cage they are having the equally spaced and the third assumption is the balls in the upper half do not supports the load so if you are mounting the shaft inside of this bearing the upper portion will not carries any kind of the load so these are the three assumptions they have made for calculating the static load carrying capacity of the bearing so for calculating the static load carrying capacity of the bearing you should know how the forces are going to act on the balls and the races so if you observe this just i will use the pointer if you observe this this is the static load load is acting from the shaft to the balls and the races that is the load is going to act in a vertically downward direction it is indicating by the letter c not that is the static load carrying capacity of the bearing so equal and opposite forces or the reaction is going to occurs from the balls to the races so as the c not is vertically downward the reactive forces from the balls is acting like this p1 p2 that are the balls are equally spaced and from the balls the reactive forces are going to act in the upward direction that is a p1 p2 this is a p2 this is a p3 so these are the equal and opposite reaction is going to act opposite to the static load and as the balls are equally spaced it makes an angle beta okay so this is nothing but the force analysis or the reactive forces acting due to the static load and one more things as the deformation is going to occurs in the race as the load is going to act vertically downward the deformations are delta 1 so previously this is our the previous figure this round shape and after applying the load it will get deformed by an amount delta 1 so delta 1 is nothing but the deformations occurs in the first ball this is a delta 2 deformations occurs in the second ball similarly delta 3 so like this the deformation is going to occurs in the races it is indicating by the letter delta 1 delta 2 delta 3 respectively so consider the equilibrium forces acting in a vertical direction so as the c not the vertical forces is acting in the downward direction equal and opposite forces are acting in a upward direction if you consider the vertical plane c not is equal to p1 plus p2 it makes an angle with the vertical plane as a beta therefore we are getting p2 cos beta similarly here the p2 is going to act so here also the p2 cos beta so we are getting p1 plus 2 times p2 cos beta if you observe the p3 p3 makes an angle with the vertical axis as a twice beta therefore p3 cos of twice beta similarly here the p3 force is going to act so here we are getting p3 cos of twice beta so simultaneously we can do all the balls which is acting the reactive forces we can find out the static load carrying capacity of the bearing by using this equation c not is equal to p1 plus 2 times p2 cos of beta plus 2 times p3 cos of 2 beta plus p4 if if it is a ball plus p4 sorry 2 times p4 cos of 3 beta so uh, like this we can do depending upon the number of the balls so this is a equation number 1 and if you observe the relation between your the delta 1 that is the deflection in the races delta 1 and delta 2 so as this is a delta 1 and this is a delta 2 it's makes an angle beta it's may as it is a equally spaced the delta 1 and delta 2 makes an angle beta so like this just i will draw the figure it's makes an angle beta this is a delta 1 this is a delta 2 therefore we are getting the relation between delta 1 and delta 2 is equal to delta 2 is equal to delta 1 cos beta 
so from this geometry we are getting the relation between delta 2 and delta 1 therefore delta 2 by delta 1 is equal to cos beta this is the equation number b next according to the hertz equation the relation between load and the deflection delta at the ball is given by so this is a relation by the hertz equation that is by the contact stress theory we are getting deflection delta is directly proportional to the load raised to 2 by 3 so we can consider the c1 as a proportionality constant therefore delta 1 is equal to c1 p1 raised to 2 by 3 similarly we can get delta 2 is equal to c1 p2 raised to 2 by 3 as c1 is a proportionality constant here also we are using the c1 c1 is nothing but the proportionality constant therefore we are getting the relation between delta and the p that is delta 2 by delta 1 is equal to p2 by p1 raised to 2 by 3 so from this equations we are getting the relation that is the equation number 3 <coughs> and we know that from the equation b delta 2 by delta 1 is equal to cos beta therefore by considering the equation b and c we are getting p2 by p1 raised to 2 by 3 is equal to cos beta that we are equating the right hand side that is the p2 by p1 is equal to cos beta therefore p2 is equal to p1 cos beta raised to 3 by 2 similarly we can easily calculate the relation between p3 by p1 raised to 2 by 3 is equal to cos beta that is a p3 is equal to p1 cos of 2 beta raised to 3 by 2 so as we are knowing this relation we are seeing this relation from the equation number a that is a c naught is equal to p1 plus 2 times cos of 2 times p2 cos of beta plus 2 times p3 cos of 2, 2 beta just we have to put the value of the p2 p3 in this equation so we will get this relation for the c naught just simplify this equation we are getting p1 into this bracket so this bracket is indicating the constant term that is the angle beta so we can consider that constant terms as a m we are given as a notation as m where the m is equal to that bracket if z is number of the ball then we can easily calculate the value of the beta as the beta is nothing but the angle between uh, each ball therefore beta is equal to total 360 degree divided by the number of the balls z we can get the value of the beta the value of the m, m for the different value of the z can be tabulated like this so in this tables we are getting if you are putting z is equal to 8 z is equal to 8 we can put this in this equation you will get the value of the beta put this value of the beta in the above equation you will get the value of the m so if you are putting z is equal to 8 10 12 15 respectively we are getting the value of the m then divide z by m you will get this the value of the z by m so if you observe this value of the z by m we can consider the value of the z by m is nothing but the phi just put the value of the z by m that is a we are getting the value of the z by m is equal to phi therefore m is equal to z by phi just put this value in the equation d we can easily calculate the value of the c naught therefore c naught is equal to p1 into z by phi from the experimental evidence it is found that the force p1 is required produce a given permanent deformations of the ball and it is given by p1 is equal to k d square where d is nothing but the diameter of the ball and the factor k is depending upon the radii of the curvature at the point of contact and the moduli of elasticity of the material therefore we are getting the equation that is the final equation c naught is equal to k d square z by phi so this equation is called as strabag equation so based on this strabag equation we can easily calculate the static load carrying capacity of the bearing so i have taken a reference as a vb bandari book thank you